Maintaining homeostasis often involves controlling the expression of different genes to make sure that you're producing the right proteins that are needed for whatever state the organism is in. In eukaryotic cells, there are a lot of different forms of gene control and control of gene expression that involve transcription factors and phosphate groups and a lot of other things. But the most commonly tested form of gene control and the most straightforward one that you're likely to encounter is known as an operon. And an operon is a type of gene control or gene repression that you see in prokaryotic cells and it's very well understood. The most likely operon that you will encounter and also one that is sort of a framework that allows you to see all of the other operons and understand them is the LAC operon. It's sort of your prototypical operon and understanding it can help you understand other operons that you may encounter on your MCAT exam. The LAC operon is something that codes for beta galactosidase and because it's an ACE you know it's an enzyme and it's a galactosidase and so it helps you metabolize or break down lactose groups and it's something that is encountered in E. coli which is a prokaryotic cell type and the LAC operon is a prototypical operon because it has this structure which I will describe as PROG, P-R-O-G it sounds like the city in the Czech Republic, but obviously spelled different. There are four parts to the LAC operon. There's the promoter region, the repressor, the operator, and the gene. And in this case, our gene is encoding the transcript that will end up producing the protein enzyme beta-galactosidase. And the way that it works is that the promoter region is where the RNA polymerase will bind. And so the RNA polymerase is kind of shaped like this. It's kind of shaped like a, a curved hand that grasps onto the chain. And the operator is the region that controls whether the polymerase is able to move and transcribe the gene or whether it's going to be stuck. And the way that this works is that there's a repressor. And a repressor is a protein that perfectly fits into the operator site. And when the repressor is in this form, it will be joined to the operator. And notice that it serves as a barrier for that polymerase to move across. So while the repressor is bound, when the repressor is up here and it's occupying this space, we'll just kind of draw that like this. Notice that the, the RNA polymerase on the pr promoter is simply unable to pass through the operator and reach the area where it transcribes the gene. And so the normal state with this repressor in its form, and I should draw it in this exact form because that's what it will look like, the normal state is that you're not transcribing the gene. However, there are two conditions where the LAC operon will be activated in, to enable you to encode this gene. You have to have a low level of glucose and a high level of allolactose, or a lot of lactose in the environment. And that kind of makes sense because if you don't have a lot of lactose around, there's no need for you to encode a gene that will produce a protein that breaks down that lactose. If there isn't lactose around, you don't need this enzyme that can break down that lactose. And so in this case, what the lactose does is when you now encounter lactose, when it exists in the cell's environment, this allolactose, we'll uh, write this down, uh, it serves an important role as an activator. And here's how it does that. When the allolactose fits into the repressor, and the repressor has a site for the allolactose, let's erase this here. What will happen is that the repressor will now change shape. So let's say the repressor now it has its allolactose, and now it's going to be in a different conformation. It will undergo a conformational change. And thus, this repressor that used to fit very nicely into there will no longer be of the shape where it can fit into the operator. And so if the activator, this allolactose, is present, it causes the repressor to change shape and no longer be able to repress 
the transcription at that location. And when that happens, now the promoter is free to move all the way along here and it passes the operator site and is able to then transcribe that gene and the transcript will then be converted into a protein and that protein will be the beta galactosidase. So all of the other allolactose in the environment will now be able to be degraded by the beta galactosidase. And so essentially it's a sort of, it's a form of feedback. You can look at it that way. Essentially when you have the allolactose there, the repressor no longer represses transcription of this gene. And that is the purpose of an operon. An operon is this entire thing, the whole prog plus potentially an activator. The promoter region, which is where the polymerase will bind. The operator, which is sort of the area that isn't part of the actual gene, but it does sort of hold the keys to the castle. It controls whether this polymerase is able to transcribe or whether it's going to be blocked by a repressor in its sort of native form. And then the gene itself, these are all, the PROG as well as possibly the activator can be considered your operon and it's a great form of gene control. The way that it works is when you don't have the allolactose here, then the repressor is repressing that transcription and you end up with none of this enzyme. When you do have the lactose available now, the lactose will cause the repressor to change shape and now it will stop repressing function and the promoter region will simply be bound to the polymerase, it will slide through the operator region and then it will transcribe this transcript that will eventually become beta-galactosidase and allow you to degrade all of that allolactose. So when the lactose is present, it makes the repressor unable to repress and then you are able to produce the enzyme that enables you to now handle the lactose in that environment. And this is something that once it was understood was very, very useful for understanding the role of gene control. And as mentioned, in eukaryotic cells, there, there's a lot of complexity to it. There are transcription factors and a lot of other controls, perhaps kinases and phosphatases and other things all will play a role. And it's a very advanced thing that in some areas we still haven't completely understood. The operon is a lot more straightforward. It helped us understand how gene control and gene repression exists in prokaryotes. Another thing you might hear it referred to is as the Jacob Monod model. These are the two scientists, Jacob, M-O-N-O-D. They were two of the scientists who discovered this and they're French scientists, hence the name Monod. And um, this is the Jacob Monod model of gene control and it's something that is at a level of understanding where it can be tested and it can help you understand how does the whole environment interact so that we can control this gene and maintain homeostasis. And the LAC operon is the one you're most likely to encounter. It's the one you'll see in your MCAT books. It's one you frequently will likely see on the MCAT and it's something where it is a prototype for how all operons work. They have this PROG structure, the promoter region where the polymerase binds, the repressor which binds to the operator and stops the polymerase from moving, and then the gene, so it's PROG. And then when this repressor is in the presence of an activator, it undergoes that conformational change that now allows the polymerase to transcribe that gene. And so when the lactose is there, you're making the enzyme. When it's not there, then you have this repressor that is in its original form and it's blocking transcription because you don't need to transcribe that gene. And so as long as you understand that, then you're very, very strong with your understanding of operons, which remember are a prokaryotic form of gene control, but because of their straightforwardness, something that you'll encounter a lot. One other thing that might be tested specifically with the LAC operon is that it also tends to work best in situations where you don't have much glucose. 
If you do have a lot of glucose, then the E. coli probably won't need to rely on other carbohydrates like lactose for its energy supply. And so even if there is a lot of lactose, if there's glucose around, it doesn't care too much. This is, again, something that is not a general operon thing, but something that's rather specific to the lac operon. However, when you have low glucose, I'll just draw this feedback here, low glucose leads to a high level of cyclic AMP. You don't need to know the nuances or the reason for that. But the cyclic AMP here binds to a special region called the CAP region, C-A-P. And the CAP region is something that is something you encounter with the LAC operon, but not every one. But if the glucose is very low, then cyclic AMP goes up, and the CAP region is going to help activate this promoter. So it's going to make it better and better as a promoter and make it more capable of attracting that polymerase. The details are far beyond what you need to memorize for the MCAT, but be aware that you can encounter this form of control because remember the whole purpose of any operon is to allow you to adapt to be able to handle whatever environment the cell is in. In a situation where there is a lot of glucose, even if there is a lot of lactose, you might not need as much of this enzyme in order to break down that lactose. And so it might be the case that you just don't end up producing as much of the beta-galactosidase. However, if you have both of these conditions, a lot of lactose present and a very low level of glucose, then the E. coli needs to rely on that lactose as its energy form. And so it could be a concerted type of mechanism where low glucose leads to high cyclic AMP, which makes this cap region through a series of proteins help make the promoter even better. And at the same time, you need that lactose there in order to, even if this is a very good promoter and the, the polymerase binds really well, if you have uh, the low levels of lactose, it will still be repressed. And so if you have high lactose, low glucose, then this operon will be highly, highly active and it will enable the cell to respond to its environment and be able to use that for energy. So understand that this could come up, but it's not gonna be something you're responsible for memorizing. However, understanding the operon is something that will show up over and over again, and it's probably the most popular way for them to test gene control because it's such a direct process. It's the PROG, and if the repressor is in its original form, it's blocking transcription. And then if the activator is present, the repressor no longer blocks it, and the polymerase is free to go, and as soon as the polymerase is working, this is an RNA polymerase, you're getting your primary transcript that's being converted into a protein via the translation process, and then you're able to directly respond to whatever environment is going on throughout the cell.